as we head into the elections, it's been very obvious that uh, the road carnage has been on the rise. Um, unfortunately, this seems to happen every time uh, we get into electioneering season. Uh, it's important for us to have this conversation to be able to advise and to be able to educate um, the drivers across board, you know, especially those who are driving election-related vehicles, so campaigning, you know, and all of those things, political campaigns and so on. I have uh, Mr. Henry Asumeni. He is a senior planning manager with the National Road Safety Authority, and he's going to help us to get into this conversation. Good morning, sir. Um, good morning. How are you? I'm good. All right. So, um, you know, this, just in the last couple of weeks, we've had a few stories. Uh, we had um, six members of uh, NDC support team. Um, they died in a road crash um, during a campaign uh, thing. Also, just, um, I think it was a couple of days ago, um, another person died. Uh, again, it was still a campaign-related thing. Um, what is the National Road Safety Authority doing about this? Okay, thank you very much. And I think news just in is that the convoy of the um, second lady mm. has been involved in a crash. Wow. But not her vehicle, I think one of the, one of the, the, other, the vehicles. other vehicles. So wow. um, we sent some condolences to the families hmm. of the injured. So far, no death has been recorded, but there are three critical mm. injured pe persons at the hospital. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, one thing that we experience, during, especially during election years, is that it's a movement of people mm. because of campaigns. He said to maybe people wouldn't be moving, but on election years, because of campaign, they need to go around the country, and that uh, make, uh, allows people to spread, people to move, people to roam. What we realize is, um, as a culture in Ghana, sometimes mm. when we attain some offices, we feel that we are not part of those that the laws are made for. Yeah. So we tend to use the road as we want to, not as the road is supposed to be used mm. for. We tend to speed. We tend to drive for long hours. Two things that can be attributed to a lot of times to these type of crashes in election years is one, speeding, two, fatigue. And then the third one is the disregard for road traffic regulations. So I'm sure, I don't know where you live, but where I live, there's a lot of traffic on the road. Sometimes when you are coming, you see these, we in quote, high class citizens. Mm -hmm. they, those who use the V8s, those who use the Porsche vehicles. Yeah passing by you, blowing their horn, that gives them way for them to pass. When you're on the freeway too, sometimes they pass you with a speed of light. Mm. Sometimes you, you don't even see the number plate of the vehicle because of the speed at which he passed you. But we should all know that the speeds, uh, the roads have speed limits. And in Ghana, the only road that you can go above 90 kilometers per hour is the Tema Accra motorway. Yeah. And even that one, we advise that because of the, uh, the encroachment, because of the lay-by, because of the outlays that has been done on those roads, we advise that you go up to the 90. But apart from that road, there's no road in Ghana that you can go above 90 kilometers per mm. hour. What happens most of the time is that, one, because of meetings, we don't move early. Let's say I want to go to Kumasi today. I am on a campaign trail, but I'm in Accra. Maybe I need to see to certain things. I want to be in Kumasi by 3 o'clock. I would wait till around 12 before I move from Accra. Now, I would instruct my driver. Sometimes you don't tell the driver to speed. You only tell him, Charlie, need, I, need to need be, to be by... I need to be in Kumasi by 3. Mm. Then he looks at his time, and he knows that you are, you are telling him that he should Step speed. On it. He should disregard road traffic regulations. Mm. He shouldn't tell you he's tired mm. because you need to get to your destination by three. So um, we developed something for, uh, called the Road Safety Code for political parties. We developed it way back in 2008. Okay. But it's been revised this year. That is mm. 2020, if I may just show it. Yeah. And, um, road Safety Code for political parties. Yes. 
Okay. And this, they have copies. All political parties have copies mm. since 2008. Okay. And um, this year, we have met them at regional level, all the region, we met them at regional level, and we have also met them at the national level, okay. where we shared with them the content of this code. If you go through this code, then I would, I would like to talk about the basin because of the recent happening mm. over the weekend of yeah. the NDC supporters, may their souls uh, rest in peace. But before I go on, I always say something that now the NDC have lost six people. Mm. They are potential voters for them. They would have voted for them, even we are a, sure. Even a seventh. Yeah, mm. we are sure. They would have voted for them. So when these things happen, you tend to be losing your supporters. Mm. Now you lose the people who would go and vote for you because you want their vote. Now they are dying, they are not voting. Yeah. You also lose the people who we are trying to come and govern because if we all die, who do you govern? <laughs> There's no one to govern. So let us all try as much as possible to work within the realms of the law. Within this uh, particular code that I'm talking about, there's a session where we talk about the busing, uh, transportation of party supporters. Mm. And it comes with the buses because normally they are transported in buses. We shouldn't overload the buses. Yeah. You see, what happens when you overload a bus is that every vehicle that is driven can be maneuvered at certain angles. Now, when you overload such a vehicle, the maneuvering is minimized. Mm. So maybe a turn that he could have just done and nothing would happen. Now, when he does that, that turn, um, he may fall off. Mm. Let's just take a tip. I mean, it's not that I'm, I want to put one political party in the spotlight, but let's just take... What happened over the weekend? Yeah. The, some, some, some media reports are saying it's a truck. Some mm. others are saying it's a bus. Mm. But whatever it was, when you look at you listen to it, the cause of the accident was that a, a, a motor rider crossed the yeah. vehicle. Yeah. Now you ask yourself, at what speed mm. was this vehicle going that a motor rider would cross it for it to lose control? Mm. That's the first thing you ask yourself. Now you look at the road where the thing happened. And you look at it, was, was, was that area convenient for the type of speed mm. that would allow such a, 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 an accident to happen? No. Mm. It is on the Ejra, Ejra yes, Road. Situ yes, road, yeah. if you look at that road, I think it's a newly constructed, it's very smooth. Mm. Then the, but it is passing through a lot of villages and towns. Yeah. And then we all know that when you are driving on such a road, your speed limit is 50 kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. So if we were driving at 50 kilometers per hour, I, I uh, beg to say that I don't think you can lose control of your vehicle. Or, or even at 80, there, is, there really isn't, I mean, of course, unless you're, you're like you said, overloaded yes. the vehicle, and so in your normal maneuvering, it won't work. At 80, you shouldn't, you know, if you're going to swerve a motorbike that's trying to cross you, and then, and then sometimes it could be inattentiveness. Mm. You see, one of the major causes of accidents in Ghana is inattentiveness. When you are paying attention on the road, if your senses are all geared towards the driving, you tend to see a hazard about 50 kilometers away, mm. which meant that, let's say he was driving, he would have seen this motor rider about 50 kilometers away. Yeah. So let's say in the event that the, you see the motor rider, the first thing you ask yourself is when we, when it comes to the driving task, we have some questions we ask ourselves. Mm. You, the first question you ask yourself is, what can I see? Yeah. As you are driving. Mm. So let's let you. I'm, I'm, uh, unfortunately, I'm centering on this bus issue, it's event. So the first question the driver should ask himself: What can I see as soon as he looks on the road? Look, I can see an Okada rider. I'm sorry, not Okada, a motorbike rider mm. um, coming from the left. What can't I see? I can't see whatever is in that junction where he yeah. is coming from. Yeah. What do I know? I know that this uh, motor rider who is coming may want to come into the road. Mm. So what don't I know? I don't know his decision as of now. What would happen if, and that's a critical question. So now you ask yourself, what would happen if this motor rider comes into the road. Yeah. It means that he would cross me. Yeah. So what would I do? Yeah. You need to take a safe act. Evasive action. So now what happened? The motor rider came into him, his road. Mm. If he had taken this precaution way back, then he would have allowed himself 
to even start slowing down before that action the yeah. motor rider took. Yeah. And he would have saved a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. And as you just said, the seventh person has died. So seven people have died out yeah. of this accident and several injuries, injured people are at the hospital. Yeah. It is an avoidable crash. So we have a question here from our viewers, uh, okay. one of our viewers. As a country, how are we assuring that people don't drive above speed limits? Are there fines? Yes, if you look at the road traffic regulations, that is the LI 2180, it is yeah. stipulated there when, um, as a driver, you are um, arrested for over speeding, mm. uh, for speeding above the, above speed, limit, the speed limit. Yeah. We all understand it as over speeding, so <laughs> let me just use that word over speeding. So when you are arrested for over speeding, and there are stipulated fines within the road traffic regulations mm. that mm. you can't be fined. Mm. Even in certain times, you can't be jailed. Mm. So this is something about we want to move from this manual way of checking it, where the police will be standing on the road with a, a speed radar gun. Yeah. We need to move away from that so that whether the police is there or not, mm. you are being checked. Absolutely. And that is something that the Ghana Police Service is bringing very soon, okay. where they are going to automate their system so that good. now they will be able to detect speeding mm. and other, other road traffic violations, yeah. even when they are not there. Fantastic. Because they are going to use technology to capture things that that's are That's the best the news I've heard in 2020. Yes, and I'm telling you that's the best thing that would happen on our roads mm. very soon. Let's say by 2021, we should have this and we'll Fantastic. see a change. Okay. And we believe that this one would change the behavior of road users. I agree. Then also, the, uh, the, uh, the, as an authority, yeah. we are running the Arrival Life campaign where mm -hmm. we are trying to change road user attitudes. We want everybody to hear. Okay. Sometimes they say, we already know. It's like mm. going to church. We already mm. know. Mm. But you don't know when something would hit somebody. Yeah. That is why we keep on repeating everything we say. And in this season, we would keep on repeating our message to the political parties. Yeah. You should take responsibility for your supporters. You mm. should take responsibility for people you are transporting. You should take responsibility when you are going on your campaign errands. Yeah. And I always say Thank that you. sometimes... Please wrap up for us. Pardon? Please wrap up for us. As you wrap, okay, okay. I, I would always say that as you go on your campaign trail, think of the driver. Mm. The law says that the driver cannot drive continuously for four hours without resting. Yeah. And he cannot drive continuously for eight hours within a 24-hour period. Let mm. us observe this. Mm. If we are going on a journey that it will take us more than the eight hours, let us make sure that we change drivers at certain points. Okay. And when we go on our campaign trails, when we get to our destinations, when we are doing the campaign, let's ensure that the driver is resting. Hmm. So because when the driver is ride, ride, driving, yeah. we are resting. So yeah. when we are campaigning, let them be resting. Oh, okay. And let's transport our supporters in buses and mm. not overload those buses and ensure that the drivers of those buses are competent enough thank you. and they have the requested information to be on the road. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we've been speaking with Mr. Henry Asumeni, who is a senior planning manager with the National Road Safety Authority. And this is a very important conversation for us to have. Hi there. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily, only on City TV.